Was there an Adam? Was there an Eve? Or did we evolve from what we conceived? Either way, we got what we needed when the sun shone down on the Garden of Eden. Don't you know we're gonna have a solitopia, solitopia, solitopia? Don't you know we're gonna have a solitopia all over God's green world? Well, we bit that apple and the garden was lost, and so we had to work to pay the cost. And so we went digging into the ground and started to burn many things we found. But don't you know oh, yeah. we're gonna have a solar Too many things we found. We burned too many things we found. That's the Divine Dar Williams with the legendary Pete Seeger and David Byrne, who wrote the song, the lyrics to that Grammy-winning song, except for one Solar Topia, which I wrote. How you doing, everybody? It's Harvey Sluga Wasserman here, back for another hour at the Green Power and Wellness Show, and we have some serious business to do. We're going to devote the whole hour to Diablo Canyon and nuclear power. We have two spectacular guests on with us, Linda Seeley from San Luis Obispo, California. Linda, are you on with us? I am. Hi, hi Harvey. Good to talk to you. Hi, Seeley, and you can call me Sluggo. As we, I as will we go call ahead. you Sluggo. And Paul, Paul Gunter, how are you? Hey, Sluggo, no nukes. I know next, but he had, actually, uh, Paul and I, Paul has known me as Sluggo probably before he knew me as Harvey, right? Way back at Seabrook uh, in, uh, in, the, in the 70s uh, uh, doing our thing, and we are still doing our thing, and we are closing in on the Diablo Canyon nuclear plant. I know, Linda, Seeley, you can only stay with us for a half hour, and at the half hour, Bob Petrakis will join <clears> us <throat> from Columbus, Ohio, okay. to talk about an, an astonishing development in nuclear power in central Ohio. But in the meantime, <clears throat> let me explain real quickly, and then we'll jump into this because this, folks, is really, really big. We do have the power at this point in time to have a major impact on the most, one of the most dangerous nuclear power plants in all the world, the Diablo Canyon nuclear two reactors at San Le- nine miles west of San Luis Obispo on the coast of uh, central California. Uh, and uh, we have, all three of us have been working on this uh, probably uh, collectively more than 100 years, easily <laughs> actually more than 100 years. Uh, so um, uh, here's what's happened. We have talked about this on the show before, but we are getting really, really near crunch time. Now, we're, we're in a perfect storm here. This has not happened, to my knowledge, um, in all of U.S. history. We have a nuclear power plant wh- whose owner, P- Pacific Gas and Electric, is in bankruptcy, which is now shut. Uh, for refueling, Diablo Canyon Nuclear Unit 1 went down on Sunday. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to take them, but they, my understanding is generally the reactor cools for a few days. Then they go in, they have to take out uh, a third of the old fuel, <clears throat> and then they have to do various maintenance and stuff like that. And then they want to put in the new fuel. And our, our objective here in this video game is to prevent uh, the new fuel from going in. And there are a, an astonishing number of reasons why this should happen. But first, I'm going to name the top seven. I like David Letterman. He's a 10. Word. Seven, although I'm sure we could easily get to 10. Number one is embrittlement. We are 100% certain that Diablo Canyon Unit 1 is embrittled. Um, uh, and, Paul, at some point maybe you can explain embrittlement but or Linda. But um, um, uh, in 2000. And, Two, I believe it was, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission listed Diablo Canyon Unit 1 as one of the most embrittled reactors in the United States that has not been tested since we want Unit 1 tested for embrittlement before the fuel is loaded in. And we believe the governor has the legal power to do this. So we are writing, calling, emailing, emailing petitioning Gavin Newsom, the new governor of California, uh, to make this happen. And he does have... As best we can tell, he does have the legal power to force PG&E to do these tests, even though they certainly don't want to do them. Number two is um, uh, cracking. Uh, We're pretty sure, high likelihood, that Diablo Unit 1 is cracked. There are simple, cheap tests that can be done with ultrasound, and we want to find that out. Again, the governor can order this. Number three is deferred maintenance. 
we know that PG&E has been deferring, uh, uh, taking care of the Unit 1 and the Unit 2. <clears throat> they have now, because of deferred maintenance on pipes in San Bruno, they caused a major fire. They killed eight people in San Bruno in 2010. They have conv- been convicted of various felonies because of this. <laughs> they actually have a parole officer. I don't know how many corporations in America have a parole officer, but PG&E has one. They also set off, because of poor maintenance with their power lines, they set off at least 17 fires in Northern California, killing 80 people and destroying 1,000 homes. Number four, seismic issues. We know that uh, we have been told by an NRC inspector, Michael Peck, that uh, Diablo cannot withstand an earthquake. We want a public hearing on this. Number five, waste management. We know that there are serious problems with waste management at Diablo Canyon. We want a public hearing on that. Number six, the competence of PG&E. The uh, congressperson who represents San Luis Obispo in the U.S. House of Representatives has already gone public saying that he doesn't think PG&E is competent to run those two reactors. We want a hearing on that. And finally, need for power. We don't need the power from Diablo Canyon. In fact, it's a negative on the grid in California. We want a hearing on that. Gavin Newsom can do all that. And we want it done before new fuel is loaded into Diablo Canyon Unit 1. So let's start with you, Seeley, uh, Linda Seeley in Central California and San Luis Obispo, then Paul Gunter. But Linda, tell us what the Mothers for Peace are doing and, and what you think about all this. Okay, well, thanks again, uh, Sluggo, for uh, having me on today. Um, Mothers for Peace ha- has been um, in touch with Gavin Newsom's office, though we haven't gotten any response from them. But we wrote them a letter on December 28th and again February 2nd um, uh, to to support basically what you've said. Although not we ha- we didn't we weren't that complex in our desires. What we want is while this um, uh, unit is offline, we 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 know that the reactor vessel in Unit 1 is embrittled. And what that means is if, if, if they had to go into a cold shutdown where they have, would have to dump a bunch of cold water in it to stop the nuclear reaction, it could and probably would shatter. If it shattered, it would cause something like uh, what happened at Fukushima, which would, is about the worst thing that can happen at a nuclear power plant. So they can um, test for this. And it, uh, what, it, what it involves is taking a thing called a um, coupon, coupon, which is a piece of material that's made of the same stuff as all the welds inside of that reactor vessel. And um, they go take it to a lab and they do what's called destructive testing on it. I don't know exactly what that means, but I know it, they destroy it in the testing and through the process of testing it, they can tell just how embrittled those welds are. And the thing about this Unit 1 reactor is that it was manufactured in, I think, 1969, shipped to Diablo (laughs) in 1972, and uh, it has too much um, copper in the welds. They discovered later that if you put too much copper in the welds, that the copper is the stuff that becomes embrittled. So this reactor vessel, they've known it all along, but it's uh, the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, I guess, thinks it's okay because they allow it. Well, of course, they think anything nuclear is okay. Right, that's true. But frankly, you know, if it's... If that, well, all we want to know is, is this reactor vessel, uh, you know, worthy of running anymore? And we would feel extremely relieved if they did the testing and told us that, oh, it's, it's just fine and dandy and we could verify those tests. It would be a great, huge relief to us. We don't think that would happen, but, um, but we want to get that testing done. Um, and then the crack is, is re- the same. Well, let's you know. talk about embrittlement first. Uh, uh, Paul Gunter, uh, do you want to go in and 
tell us a bit about embrittlement as it relates to Diablo Canyon and other nuclear plants in the United States? <clears throat> uh, sure, Sluggo. Um, the um, the issue here is that when you when you operate a nuclear power station, you get a lot of radiation in all kinds of forms. But the one of particular concern is the neutron bombardment that comes off the core, and that. Um, that type of radiation is so intense uh, during operation that you can change the material quality of the metal, as uh, Linda pointed out. So this would be both the welding material and the, uh, uh, the base material of the rolled steel itself that's been welded together. And... Um, as Linda pointed out, um, one, of the, um, one of the qualities of the metal that changes after decades of irradiation by neutron bombardment is that it loses its ductility, um, you know, the, uh, the ability to transform between hot and cold conditions, and um, where it can expand and contract. And, uh, you know, you and I, when we got started in this, we actually, in, in the 70s, we knew about embrittlement. And quite simply, we compared it to baking a wine glass and pouring cold water into it. That's the, that's the kind of shattering that Linda was uh, referring to if you go from full power operation, full stop, core shutdown and introduction of the emergency core cooling system, that's the kind of risk that you, that you run of, um, as, the, as the material quality of this reactor changes uh, under this uh, age-related degradation is what they call it. But, you know, this is only one of 16 known different severe age-managing age management problems for Diablo Canyon. Um, And it affects everything from the reactor um, wall uh, right down to the electrical cabling. And, you know, I would introduce quickly one other little item that is a big concern that should probably be added to your list. And that is the fact that Um, uh, On January 24th, 2019, uh, just a few weeks ago, the uh, U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, NRC, or also commonly referred to as nuclear regulatory chaos, the, um, the five commissioners had a vote on more than eight years of Fukushima lessons learned that their staff through its Fukushima task force had been going through. And the staff, in its technical study judgment, determined that there should be orders that particularly look at and, and reevaluate <clears throat> the seismic risk of U.S. nuclear power stations <clears throat> and their ability to withstand flooding. And the staff, in its technical judgment, said that there should be orders issued for a reevaluation of Diablo Canyon's uh, ability to withstand an earthquake using modern technology and analysis. On January 24th, the U.S. Commission voted along party lines, three Republicans against one Democrat and one independent. And they voted to roll back the staff's recommendation to require this reevaluation on seismic um, uh, endurance of Diablo Canyon and all the other U.S. nuclear power stations. And the reason they did this was the nuclear industry was able to successfully lobby along party lines to financially shield this nuclear power plant and, and all of the others from the financial cost of that reevaluation. So 
what you have right now is that the standard of safety oversight for Diablo Canyon's ability to withstand an earthquake is based on 1960 information that the NRC basically said they would not require this reevaluation to be updated to modern standards, but go by what they call the design basis criteria. And design and, basis and, and, uh, criteria... Paul, let me just, since uh, since uh, Linda Seeley has pointed out that Yavo Canyon was manufactured in 1969, for God's mm-hmm. sakes, we're using specs that date back 50 years. 50 right. before and the And they're before. ignoring the new information that their staff provided them from the earthquake that caused three core meltdowns in uh, Japan. And, and you know, I, rather than be long-winded about this, let me just say that the, the, the decision has the audacity to um, roll back these recommendations um, by, uh, as a cost-saving measure. You know, the, 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 estimate, the estimate that was given by the staff, would, if, you, if you sort of give it an average um, over U.S. reactors, it was like $1.7 million per, per unit. And what the NRC Commission decided upon was one-tenth that cost for the new rule that they revised from their staff's regulation. So, I, you know, the up, I, go ahead. Yeah. Paul, Paul, let me jump in. Yeah, go ahead. Linda. Yeah, Paul. That's amazing, informa- much, amazing information. I wonder how much the Fukushima catastrophe is going to cost to grow. Oh, uh, you know, probably 350 to $500 billion. Hmm, but you can't measure. Minimum. You can't measure. You know, wiping out whole sectors of your economy. Think about that for for California. Right. Yes, and the, you know, Fukushima just in 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 ten minutes cost sixty billion dollars. If you put a ten billion dollar price on each of the six reactors that was immediately shut down, and of course, thank God, the people of Japan have rallied to keep most of the reactors. In, in, in Japan shut since Fukushima. Linda, I know you've got to jump to a meeting, and, and I want to inject this, this, this information from Paul, which I have not, I knew about this uh, decision, and there was a scathing dissent from at least one of the, um, uh, two. Jeff Barron, two of the, uh, two of the uh, yeah. five commissioners that you just really ripped the, the other three. I mean, I've, you know, it's like uh, the four justices, the liberal justices on the Supreme Court ripping the five conservatives. But, um, uh, that, you Linda, know, you go into your, that's what ahead, that's what really bothered me when I read about this is how politicized the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has become a, a regulatory agency that is all about protecting um, the health and safety of the public has actually become a political tool and it no it has it, it's it's not run on an ethical basis it's not run on a scientific basis it's run as a political um uh, b- machine a shield it's, it's a shield it's a shield for the nuclear power industry now when they're going to go into a legal meeting and, and we want to uh, we want to discuss one thing, Paul. We're, we're looking for here in California, and I'm sure you'll be helpful on this. Is is ways in to the courts, and it has been suggested that um, the anti nuclear movement do a couple things: possibly file for a TR, uh, a temporary restraining order, which is very expensive and dicey because we don't know how the judge is going to rule. But we could also file an amicus brief, and the stuff that Paul just laid out here would really go well with a lot of the other things we're um, advocating. And um, and certainly the, the hundreds of people in Northern California 
who are su- suing PG&E under the bankruptcy laws, perhaps um, some of them might be willing to care, might, willing to accept our amicus brief, um, laying out what Paul has just said and all the other objections we have and our demand uh, or request of the governor that he conduct these tests and hold these hearings. What do you think about that? Well, you know, uh, Sluggo, I think it, it reminds me of the, uh, uh, you know, following Fukushima, um, which was an, a massive earthquake that caused massive flooding on a nuclear complex with three reactor core meltdowns and an area the size of Connecticut that has been rendered, uh, you know, too radioactive to be safely inhabitable. And when the Japanese parliament, the, the national diet of Japan, reviewed that accident, their top officials and safety analysis and economic assessment for what caused the Fukushima Daiichi accident, the, their, their equivalent of our Congress determined that it was the collusion of government regulator and industry to put the interest the self-interest of the nuclear industry ahead of public health and safety and yes there was a two natural disasters but the consequence of the reactor meltdown could have been greatly reduced and maybe even preventable had the focus and the priorities been on protecting public health and safety and not financially shielding the nuclear uh, in industry, in this case, uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company, from uh, the cost of upgrading. And this is exactly what's just happened. We've taken a Fukushima lesson and unlearned it here in the United States. Mm-hmm. And that is um, that should undermine the credibility of the not only the industry and PG&E, but the Nuclear Regulatory Commission itself, so that the actions of the state government are to protect its own people and you know at population well, see, levels. Well, uh, see, would um, you want to comment on this? Because Paul, let me jump in here because what we have in California now is a unique situation. I, first of all, I'd love to see a translation of what the Japanese diet uh, uh, said about Fukushima. If you can get that, that Paul, that would be fantastic, and we can use that. But uh, Linda Seeley, this, in, in, you've been in the San Luis Obispo all these years, and Paul certainly knows this, that the NRC has preempted all this stuff, but that we now possibly have a way in through the governor and the bankruptcy court in, um, at the Abo Canyon, and, and possibly with a TRO, possibly with um, an amicus brief, but certainly the governor in bankruptcy, and I've been told this by a number of lawyers, does have does seem to have the power to intervene here. Um, and I know the, the mothers sent a letter to the governor. Can you tell us about that letter? Yeah. Um, the governor, uh, we have, um, well, uh, our topics that we talked to the governor about were the issues were embrittlement, uh, component cracking, um, waste management, um, that we need to do a full evaluation of the issues because things are changing. Um, <clears throat> uh, seismic vulnerability. Um, right, seismic Earthquake. Uh, vulnerability, right. Those are all very important, all, all of those issues. And we have, um, uh, we are... We are surprised that God, we haven't heard anything back from the governor's office. Um, we don't know why. We also sent the letter to our congressman, to our state assembly member, to um, the head of the California Public Utilities Commission, and the um, head of the, Na- the Department of Natural Resources in California. And we haven't heard a peep from any of them, which is kind of unusual. So we're, we're following up on it. We, we're trying to figure out um, what's going on. Um, are they not responding because they're going to do something and they kind of want to keep it under their hats? Or are they not responding because they're j- 
just too worried about the future of PG&E's um, business. I don't know. Um, but I do know well, that we so. have a nuclear power plant that has unit shut, one shut down right now and that we need to do the testing on that reactor vessel now. And so I would encourage your uh, listeners to call the governor's office or to write to them. Yes. Or to write now, to the it's governor. Very easy to, yes, it's very easy to write to the governor. It's just Governor <laughs> Sacramento, uh, and I'm digging up his zip code right now. Um, I uh, believe it's 95814. 95814. So, listeners, all you got to do, get out a postcard or send a letter to the governor, and all you got to say is, test Diablo. Here it is. 95814. You can send it to Gavin State House, Sacto, 95814. And on the postcard, all you got to say is, test Diablo, because he knows what we're talking about now. And, Siwi, uh, I know you've got to go to a meeting in a few minutes. But, I do. Um, yeah. um, we, we think, um, I think, Paul, I hope you agree that uh, we can win this. The, the governor of California has got to step in, and we don't want him just to test for embrittlement. We need to see if that thing is cracked. We need to see their deferred maintenance list. Paul, you've listed a bunch of other things from the NRC on Fukushima. We need to see about the earthquakes, about their competency, about the waste, and about the need for power. And um, if you can stick that on in a, in a TRO or an amicus brief in your, in your legal meeting, uh, Linda, that, that, that would be really great. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Paul. Nice to talk to you today. And, hey, good um, to hear you too, Harvey, Linda. Keep, keep up the good work, Harvey. Now, also, I mean, Linda, go. before you go, I've had an idea. What yeah. we should do uh, is mm-hmm. we can all just, in our local towns, we can print up postcards. You know, Gavin, uh-huh. State House, Sacto, 95814. And on the back, just say, Test Diablo uh, for the seven items. And then have a place to sign. And uh, yep. people can go around and, and uh, ask people to sign and get a buck for the postcard and send them in. And I know that will have an effect. Great idea. All right. Okay. You, talk, well, we'll talk you take care. No okay, nukes. Linda, see you. Thank, no nukes to you. Thank you uh, so okay. much for being with us. Okay. Uh, right there in the belly of the beast, uh, 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 Linda Seeley. She, I know that she's going to a, a legal meeting, uh, a conference call now. And what we're discussing here in California, Paul, is uh, uh, possibly finding a TRO uh, or uh, an amicus brief that will raise these issues. And one of the things that's so really killer here in California, Paul, and I'm sure you know, is this question of deferred maintenance. Uh, Because explicitly, in San Bruno, and we'll be joined soon by Bob Fetrakis from Central Ohio, by the way, but in San Bruno, uh, PG&E, as it does all over the state, all over the northern part of the state, has gas lines. And they, of course, in their infinite wisdom, cut back on, on maintenance. And they were doing something with the uh, testing or there was some kind of um, incident uh, with the pipes in San Bruno. And they literally, I mean, this, San Bruno is an upscale uh, suburban American su- community south of San Francisco. Uh, this is not the third world here. And these pipes blew up, burned, I believe, 19 houses, killed eight people, for God's sakes. And it was totally avoidable. I mean, completely avoidable. They were hauled into court. The the company was charged criminally with murder. They were convicted on a wide range of felonies. And the company itself has been given a probation officer, uh, a federal judge named William Elsop. And in a hearing within the last two weeks, he had uh, the, the head of the, the new head. They, there was a president of PG&E. That person has gone. There was a new president. She's gone. Now this is a new president of PG&E. And the, he was in the courtroom, and the judge said, and I quote, how many poor, more people are you going to kill? <laughs> and this is the company that's running Diablo Canyon. So, Paul, what do you, th- what do you think of PG&E's confidence here? Well, I think they should be wearing ankle bracelets at least. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I doubt the company it. Companies should be under house arrest. Yeah, I doubt it. I mean, that's yeah, again, that's the concern is the uh, impunity to face enforcement actions. Um, and and you know that's again, I go back to the fact that we are um, on top of 
the, all the concerns you've raised, we are faced with regulatory capture of the main federal agency charged with uh, protecting public health and safety from these aging, um, you know, 1960s vintage uh, technology um, that was was designed and built even before they discovered most of these earthquake faults. I mean, I, as I recall, uh, and I know we were working with our, um, uh, you know, our the Abalone Alliance uh, back then um, in the 70s, but um, when uh, PG&E first uh, proposed this uh, Diablo Canyon nuclear power station, they said there wasn't an earthquake fault around for 35 miles. I always thought that was pretty kind of... Uh, uh, dubious, but the fact now is they've discovered, uh, m- you know, more than a dozen known earthquake faults. Um, you know, many running directly under Diablo Canyon's uh, nuclear power station reactor blocks. Um, you know, uh, an earthquake fault that runs right next to the cooling water intake system for these two reactors that could be broken and you don't have any cooling water for these reactors. Um, so, you know, these this is the kind of turning, you know, turning away from new information that would cause, um, you know, some upgrades or you would think, but instead, what we're seeing is protectionism for the financial bottom line to, to eke out um, six more years of operation. Let's hope there's not an earthquake during that time. Well, we gotta, we gotta do this. I know there's been pushback. Uh, there was a great uh, deal signed um, with PG&E, the state, uh, uh, Friends of the Earth, uh, NRDC, uh, the union, uh, the local communities to have a shutdown of Unit 1 in 2024 and Unit 2 in 2025. That's the 40th year of their, of their licenses. And uh, there's been concern. There's this new um, attention that we're paying to Diablo 1 uh, might overturn that deal. But every lawyer I've talked to in California has told me that because they're now in bankruptcy, they're actually in Chapter 11, um, uh, PG&E will not honor that deal. And we've already seen um, significant evidence of that because PG&E recently uh, signed agreements with people whose lives they destroyed in Northern California by setting those fires, torching a 1,000 homes, killing 80 people, um, and they were, in, they were, they had deals to pay back, to pay compensation to some of these people. And there were, these were court ordered payments. And once they went into bankruptcy, Chapter 11, PGE stopped paying these people. So, and, I mean, it's outrageous. And, and now, you know, the idea that they would honor the original agreement to shut, to not apply for relicensing. Is is uh, is just uh, you know it's fantasy land. I mean PG and E, if they can make an extra dime <clears throat> and get away with it, we'll shoot you. So um, we feel here, at least I do, and I'm sure most of the people I've talked to agree that our only uh, defense here is to actually get these tests done. <clears throat> excuse me, to hold the hearings on the earthquake, uh, the need for power, PG and E's competency. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the waste management, and then to have the actual tests of the uh, embrittlement, uh, the cracking, and uh, and the deferred maintenance. I mean, if we don't, if we can't get this done, uh, we're in deep, deep trouble. And we think, because uh, Paul, I don't know, uh, I've never, I don't recall any instances in um, in our long long history with the nuclear power industry where an owning company has been in bankruptcy. And they've been shut, uh, a reactor has been shut for refueling. I know that the owner of Whoops went into bankruptcy, but I don't remember that they, they had um, an operating reactor shut. No, that's true. And you, that recall, you will recall that four uh, utilities went bankrupt in the construction of Seabrook in New Hampshire. 
but again, that uh, that was during the construction, and uh, you know they had uh, recovered from bankruptcy um, uh, for uh, you know for, to receive the operating license. Right, uh, Bob Fatrakis, are you on with us? Okay, Bob's not with us yet. An amazing development from Central Ohio. Um, and he's going to he's going to be calling in soon. Uh, so, Paul, um, uh, what do you think our chances are here to get through to the governor? And, and I, I would assume uh, you would normally assume that if a governor came at a nuclear utility <clears throat> demanding the kind of tests that we're asking, the utility would fire back and say, "Well, that's the PG, that's the NRC's domain." Uh, I'm telling you from California, I think if the if the governor of California, who's quite popular right now, Gavin Newsom, you know, the new guy, uh, if he asked PG&E, even just politely in a phone conversation, to do these tests and they turned him down, I don't think that would fly in this state. I mean, that would be a biggie uh, uh, right now, uh, and especially since 10,000 people, mostly Californians, were arrested there. And, you know, we're all now in our dotage, but uh, most of us, are pretty proud of, of what we did there. Well, again, um, yeah, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but um, I think that uh, a piece of the formula has to be that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is abdic- abdicating its responsibility. And, you know, you've not seen a lot of stories on this just yet, um, particularly that they that the um, that on a political vote on party line that the five that three of the five commissioners um, undercut their own staff and and slashed the cost of safety upgrades learned from the Fukushima accident and again most of the cost was um, for seismic um, and flooding upgrade. So, um, you know, I think that uh, the, the governor needs to be um, um, shown that the safety net is gone from the federal level um, and that, um, that, you know, the corporate interest and um, um, financial margin is being, has been pitted against uh, the um, – safety margins of a bankrupt nuclear power plant and that should be of that should be of concern yeah it should be you know what um, <clears throat> what i'd like to get is a copy of jeff commissioner Barron um and the other commissioner's dissent on this case <clears throat> those must be pretty uh powerful documents and i'd also wonder if we can get in english the doc the uh Proceeding the Japanese, the, uh, yeah, diet. we can send you that. Yeah, yeah the Japanese diet report and uh, the um, the two the two NRC decisions um, that um, the, you know the uh, dissenting votes uh, all came with with notation oh, votes. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, jet noise in the background here. I am in Los Angeles, uh, where this is uh, uh, part of the environment here. Uh, but, uh, Paul, I, I'm going to ask you for that, that, those documents. And, uh, I think, uh, we, we should all, uh, in the, um, in the anti-nuclear movement jump in on the drafting of this amicus brief. I believe we will be able to file an amicus brief in the, uh, bankruptcy court here in California. And it should be a real stand-up document. We do have Judge William Alsop, the probation officer of PG&E, who, uh, has also I uh, spent three hours ripping apart the company in the presence of the of the new president. Uh, so we do have fertile ground here, and uh, whatever documentation you want to pull together beyond nuclear, Paul is at beyondnuclear uh, dot org, and um, I wrap you know get Kevin and uh, Cynthia and everybody else on this. This should be a monumental document, um, and we also need to find out the time frame of uh, PG and E shut Diablo. Unit 1 on Sunday. Uh, Today is Thursday. We don't know how long we have to stop them before they stick the new fuel in. Now, the the new fuel at Diablo is a $40 million or thereabouts asset. Uh, They could sell it to another uh, nuclear user. 
uh, if they put it in to the core, it becomes a huge liability. It becomes radioactive waste. So we want to we want to stop them uh, from sticking that fuel in the reactor. And, and so we, we're talking about a matter of days here, and let's see what we can do. We've been t- we've been hesitant to file a TRO because it lar- requires a lot of legal firepower, and if we lose. You know, um, that's not good. You can't lose on an amicus brief, and you can't lose on trying to go to the governor. Uh, Bob Petrakis, you have joined us from central Ohio. Uh, It's always great to have you on the show. (laughs) And we do have a bit of comic relief here. Uh, Do you want to tell us who J. Kenneth Blackwell is and what he just said? (laughs) Well, uh, J. Kenneth Blackwell, a former... uh a right-wing Republican candidate for governor, but uh, many people know him better as as the man who stole Ohio uh, and the presidency for George W. Bush in 2004, the notorious Secretary of State that purged over 300,000 voters, shut down uh, the polling places, reshuffled them, and then failed to uh, say where the new polling places were on his uh, website. Co-chair of the Bush-Cheney re-election campaign committee, far right-wing candidate for governor, one of the only uh, black Republicans I, uh, I know of that, you know, uh, met with uh, a right, alt-right fascist militias. And now, of course, one of the leading environmentalists in the state. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good friend of Harvey Wasserman. Him and Harvey are clearly tight. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're buddies. We got arrested at the various nuclear plants. So, Paul, you'll, be, you'll probably remember Ken Blackwell. You've been following the election theft stuff, I know. So you'll be stunned to hear this. Uh, 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 Bob Fatrake is my uh, co-conspirator for 30 years and uh, political science professor at Columbus State Community College, uh, author and co-author of many, 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 many books. Will you now describe to us the op-ed that uh, the Columbus Dispatch has published with Ken Blackwell's picture? Uh, I think it was published on Sunday. Can you tell us what he wrote? Well, okay. Ken Blackwell, uh, I mean, I was reading it, and I wondered uh, why Harvey uh, Wasserman was ghostwriting uh, for <laughs> Ken Blackwell, but uh, uh, he denounced crony capitalism, uh, said uh, came down hard, no bailouts for the nuke industry, they're not worth it, they're not competitive, there's better sources, cleaner sources of uh uh, energy and uh, you know it stood up for the ratepayers, stood up for the environment, uh, and denounced corrupt crony capitalism. <laughs> so, uh, Paul Gunter, I'm sure that you're getting the smelling salts, but uh, uh, Kenneth Blackwell has opposed the bailout of the of the uh, Perry and Davis Bessie nuclear plants. Basically, he's saying that if they can't make it in the marketplace. They shouldn't be subsidies. Is that about right, Bob? Yeah, yeah, that they don't need the subsidies, that uh, not worth it, they're non-viable, uh, and uh, they should suffer their fate in uh, the marketplace, and we should move on to better energy sources. Now, in all, fairness, we have to, yes, well, in all fairness, we have to point out that uh, Ken does spend a good part of his editorial talking about how wonderful gas is. And uh, he's a big supporter, I'm sure, of fracking and uh, of the natural gas industry. But his 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 uh, point here is that why should we subsidize uh, two uh, atomic power plants when, when in his words, gas is so much cheaper? Uh, but I, I'm sure that uh, to read this, it's going to have an impact on uh, on the state legislature in Ohio, where we have been successful for many years, actually, in preventing. The bailout of the Perry and Davis Bessie nuclear plants is that right, Bob? No, uh, no, ab- absolutely. Uh, as you recall, because uh, you're one of the key foes of it, right? We we had to pay for those stranded costs, uh, you know, here in Ohio. Uh, and yeah. again, every time they should have went out of business, uh, they were subsidized uh, 
by the Ohio State House to keep them alive, no matter what shape they were in, you know, sitting on earthquake faults and with uh, holes in their heads and in their domes and failing uh, containment standards, none of it mattered. You know, there was this dedication, particularly among the Republican uh, uh, establishment. Uh, So for uh, J. Kenneth Blackwell, former Republican gubernatorial candidate uh, to come out against the nukes. Uh, uh, it's quite literally one of those earthquakes we worried about. Yeah, it's astounding. It's astounding. And Paul, you put in a lot of work on Perry and Davis Bessie and uh, First Energy, which I believe is really at the tipping point now. Can you tell us where they stand uh, uh, with uh, the four reactors that they own? You mean the... the um the uh, Davis Bessie well, plant own, and the two at Perry. Owns, the first energy owns Perry and Davis Bessie, and they also own the two at Beaver Valley, right? Beaver Valley, right. Well, again, the um, the, the plants ha- are not economically viable. That's just the that's just the the bare fact that um, in 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 particular we don't need to be bailing out failing uh, economic uh, technologies um, that only raise um, more danger, more waste, and um, don't really you know, face up to their responsibilities um, for enforceable safety standards. Um, and that's just plain risk. That's all it is. But uh, rather than subsidizing these failures, you know, Ohio, Michigan, and um, all along the the Great Lakes could be producing um, offshore wind power um, that is proving reliable, economic, economical, marketable, and incredibly safe. Uh, so uh, that's in fact the 21st century energy policy. That's essentially what is in the emerging Green New Deal. Uh, that um, you know, this 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 is what um, policy needs to look like now. Absolutely, and one of the things we have going for us at Diablo <clears throat> is that uh, P- when PG and E, excuse me, signed on to the deal to uh, uh, not apply for their license in uh, twenty four and five. Uh, and to subsidize the workers and uh, and the town and, and do all these things, uh, they uh, agreed that, that all the power from Diablo Canyon could come from renewables. Uh, that, and, you know, that was part of the, uh, the sign-off here. And that's something that we need to use and to make clear uh, to the governor and to the rest of the state that, that, that there's certainly no doubt that in California, 100% of the 2,200 megawatts coming from Diablo Canyon uh, could actually come from wind and solar, uh, tidal, geothermal, ocean thermal. Um, and add efficiency and conservation to that. And, you know, yes. Sluggo, I think that what we've got now is the we finally got an affinity group in Congress. And they're all, they look, they look yeah. to be apparently all dressed in white. But, you know, did, this, yes. uh, the, the Green New Deal, I think, is, uh, is focusing on uh, establishing um, policy uh, that is uh, dedicated towards uh, renewable energy, uh, energy efficiency, and conservation. Yes, and, uh, uh, well, of course, as Stephen Colbert pointed out last night, uh, all of the Congress was white because the women on the Democratic side were all dressed in white, and the men on the Republican side were, were all white. So uh, uh, there you go. Uh, the Green New Deal, which has been, uh, I think, uh, the preliminary uh, filing is yesterday or today. Uh, my understanding is that there is no nuclear in it, which was a, potentially a big fight. Uh, have you followed that at all, Paul or Bob? There were headlines today uh, from Bloomberg um, uh, News that um, the uh, that it's it's that there are no there's no nu- no new nuclear power. Uh, construction in the works now you know that may be what's there now um, and that may be the intent of the um, of the drafters of the green new deal but um, this is going to be 
um, a dogfight when it goes to Congress and um, and uh, to keep nuclear out of it um, is going to be um, it's it's going to be a fight. And I already you know uh, Michael Sh- uh, Schellenberger, uh, you know who's the uh, barefoot environmentalist who's really um, astroturfing for the nuclear power industry. He's already been on and and criticizing the the, the uh, Green New Deal for not supporting nuclear power. So that gives me more feeling that in fact that's that's what's there now, and the fight is on to keep it out. Yeah. Now Bob Petrakis in Ohio, <clears throat> we could easily uh, cover all the power from Davis, Bessie, and Perry with wind power in northern Ohio. And it's, of course, it's being blocked by the legislature. You've been following that a bit, I think. Well, yeah, and a lot of that turned around. I mean, there was estimated $10 billion worth of wind projects to uh, John Kasich, uh, became uh, governor and uh, pulled any uh, subsidies and made a deliberate retreat on uh, wind power. But, uh, I mean, the wind power, clearly in this state, you've lived here, Harvey, and particularly that wind, uh, you know, the five-star wind coming off uh, Lake Erie. And anyone who's lived through, uh, you know, these uh, snowstorms, uh, the lake effects storms, know what kind of wind we can generate here. Absolutely no need for, uh, uh, you know, for not using alternative power. And, uh, again, I think uh, partly, well, you're right with Blackwell being enamored with uh, natural gas, uh, is that uh, these old technologies, particularly nuclear power, I mean, uh, Blackwell spells it out. They're looking for $300 million. And he points out they gave $172,000 to House members and nearly $600,000 to the Governor's uh, Association. So uh, Blackwell is right on in saying, look, they're trying to buy, you know, uh, essentially, uh, a way to pass all of this on to the rate player, payers uh, when we have alternative energy, as you, you've spelled out many times. Right. Now, the danger we face here in California in the bankruptcy is that PG&E will want to turn around and sell these two reactors to a bottom-feeding nuke company. Uh, Paul Gunter uh, uh, from Beyond Nuclear. Uh, uh, Bob Fotrakis, I should point out, <clears throat> we're near the end here. You are the publisher of freepress.org. Uh, and uh, we can reach you there. It's a great publication, and uh, and the Columbus Free Press. Thanks for keeping it alive, Paul Gunter. You're at uh, BeyondNuclear.org, uh, one of the great anti-nuclear groups in in Washington. Um, um, who can you envision uh, a, a bottom feeders coming in and buying up Diablo Canyon? Uh, no, not now. Good. Uh, no, I, <laughs> Glad to hear I, it. No, I don't see it happening, Harvey. I, you know, um, the um, the the uh, the costs are um, prohibitive. They've become prohibitive, and the competition is getting um, more economical, particularly the renewables. Well, that's great, and it's, uh, particularly in California. I mean, you know, there are and there are sixty five thousand people in california working in the solar industry alone that doesn't include wind and uh, why we don't have a union of solar workers in in california is beyond me uh, the ibew which goes yells and screams about their 1100 workers at diablo they should be out organizing the 65,000 workers in the solar industry and there, there's there, i think there's another 10 or 15,000 in the wind business just in california so, you know, that's the future here. Uh, we are hoping uh, that Gavin Newsom is going to respond, that he'll force these tests at the ABO, that we have these hearings. And, they, uh, Paul, what kind of impact do you think it would have on the nuclear industry? I think it, um, you know, I think it will greatly influence the decommissioning industry. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that what the competition that you're going to see for Diablo Canyon is going to be who can come in and win the contract to tear it down and, dis- and and manage the nuclear waste. Well, I'm for all that, and that's what we need hearings on. And But we got to win this now. If folks listening in, send a postcard, call Gavin Newsom um, in Sacramento, just Gavin Newsom, governor, Sacramento, and um, uh, say, test 
Diablo. That's all you got to say. Write him up, say test Diablo, and let's get this done. Let's get the Diablo Canyon tested, and I'm going to guarantee that if it's tested, it'll never reopen. We want to test for embrittlement, uh, cracking, uh, the deferred maintenance list. And now, of course, uh, Paul, as you point out, Paul Gunter, all the stuff that the NRC does not want to follow up on on Fukushima. Absolutely outrageous. So uh, let's keep on this. Uh, Paul, how do you rate our chances here? Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not a gambling man, Harvey. We just need to get out there and do it. Okay, and uh, uh, Bob, I, I know that you and Ken... Well, uh, keep in mind, now. Harvey, that uh, First Energy's in bankruptcy, too, and their plan is to get the subsidy. All right, well, and watch for when they refuel. Thank you, guys. Let's shut the Apple Canyon. Thank you, crew in New York. We'll see you next week at the Green Power and Wellness Show.